Karis Hall McCollum. I'm sitting here with my dad, Dudley Hall, and you're joining us for an episode of Papa, I Have a Question. This is where I just get to sit down and literally ask my dad questions. I realize over the years that I have had a great resource um, to be able to go to him and ask questions about theology or Bible interpretation or just questions about life. And as an educator, I know that if someone has a question, usually there are other people that have that same question. So we're inviting you to join us. As I say, Papa, I have another question. Okay, what is it today? Okay, so we've actually talked about this in the past, but it got a lot of conversations going. And so I thought, let's talk about it again. And that is um, the theology of the end times. So we're living in... um, a time in history where there's a lot of conflict, there's a lot of tension. And so some people are going, okay, this is it. This is the end. We're living in the end days. So we're just going to hide and wait it out. And then we've got other people saying, okay, we have to know what all of these symbols and all of these numbers mean. And we've got to figure out the formula so that we know how to respond. And then we've got other people saying, no, we got to dig in and change the culture. We got to, you know, get people in politics and, what do we do? <laughs> uh, what is, why is there so much turmoil, confusion about the last days, the, the end of time and our response to it? Yeah, well, that's a big question. I know, it? I know. <laughs> we, we may get to do lots of these, okay. on, on that, which, which would be fine. Uh, yeah, there's lots of uh, c- controversy and complication. Mm-hmm. Just just this week, I I was I saw a new new book, mm-hmm. uh, The End. Thought well, I read this one, and uh, because he had said things have gotten so complicated, I want to simplify it. I thought that's the book the, I've been yeah, looking yeah. for. Yeah, let's do that. You know, yeah, uh, th- if you write this, I don't have to write one. <laughs> <laughs> so I read it, and it was so complicated. <laughs> 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 all the charts and all the times and the uh, so anyway it it, it is, is a big issue you know I think there there's something in all, all of us we just want to know the future I want to control I want to know what's going to happen in the future uh, you said it so we can control it so I want to control, control it yeah. I need to know so that I can prepare and exactly. I can be in charge and I can yeah. do yeah and then there, there is the, uh, the the innate pessimism that's in all of us. It's like uh, the other shoe's going to fall eventually, mm-hmm. and uh, we all know that we deserve mm-hmm. wrath. We mm-hmm. deserve bad things. We deserve tribulation. <laughs> mm-hmm. We deserve. So we, we are, we're trying to deal with that, and so it's like okay, all of this proves that you know one of these days God's going to get totally fed up and He's going to blow this thing up and. Mm. Uh, and and then I'll feel vindicated, though I'd get blown up. I mean, I mean it's, it's a strange deal. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, Karis, I think it is more simple. The fact, first of all, let me say this. The fact that it's controversial does not mean it's unimportant. Okay. So a lot of a lot of the church, a lot of Christians just say, well, there's so many views on that. There's no way I can figure it out. So it must not be important. Mm. I'm just going to get back to... You know, how to handle my money, how to handle my kids, and, you know, how do I survive? Uh, no, it is important. And yeah. that's why it's controversial. Yeah. It is important because it's telling us what's going to happen in the future. is telling us what God has done in the past and it tells us what the story is about. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so the gospel does affect the future. Right. And, and so what God has done in Christ Jesus and the gospel— prepares us to live now and and forever. So and my beliefs about the future affect my decisions that I'm making now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm confident, for instance, that what God has done is irreversible, that what he has done in my life and what he's done for us is irreversible by by my actions, that in other words that he's going to keep his promise whether I keep mine or not. And that I am secure in him because he chose me. I didn't choose him. And because he is so committed to me that he's even going to take the bad things in my life and turn them to good. And that I can't lose what he has given to me. And that there is coming a day when all rights are going to be, all wrongs are going to be made right. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I believe those things, 
It affects the way I live. It Absolutely. affects my attitude. It affects yes. how I go about life. Yeah. So, you know, just quickly, the story of the Bible is that God has, uh, has wanted to show his grace and mercy to his creation. So he allowed there to be the, the garden to fall. Uh, he, he worked through Israel as his instrument, but even Israel fell. And, and so he had to fulfill Israel's role by becoming the Messiah and doing for Israel what Israel couldn't do for itself. And, and so God has always wanted a people on the earth who were trophies of his grace, who were his instruments in uh, developing and discovering all that he had put in creation. And we are, he always wanted a people who would rule in his kingdom through love, service, the, the real values. So when Jesus died on the cross, he defeated everything that sin had, had brought in, into the whole thing. And in his death, burial, and resurrection, he created a whole new creation, mm -hmm. a whole new thing. And the down payment of that, that new creation was the Holy Spirit coming and living inside of believers. And now these believers making up the present body of Christ are to go into the world as light in a dark environment and as salt in a corrupting environment and they are to influence, infect, and invade every aspect of life. And that is that is how God glorifies himself. Mm -hmm. And that is how he accomplishes the whole goal. It will end with Jesus coming back to consummate everything that he started. But nothing is ever going to happen in our future that's greater than what's happened in the cross. It was Jesus' incarnation, his sacrificial death, his resurrection, his ascension, is sending, that's the great, those are the greatest events in history. Mm -hmm. When Jesus returns again and, and to culminate the whole thing, it, it, it will be a culmination of stuff that's already been going on. But we're living in the time right now where the leaven is working its way through the lump of dough. And so uh, th that's the real story, and that's the simplicity of it. If we believe that, then I, I need to be involved in what does leaven working his way through the dough mm -hmm. look like? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I need to, to practice my gifts and to live soberly and, and to believe that the best is yet to come, that there's coming a day when Jesus will make every wrong right, when all sadness becomes untrue, and mm -hmm. when, when ultimate delight is the order of the day. So I am not a pessimist. I don't think you can be a a Bible believing Christian and be a pessimist. Yeah. Jesus paid too much to restore this thing and for us to give it over to evil and go, well the devil won and yeah. and God snatched us out of here, you know, just to keep us from going. No, no, no. The devil didn't win. He's already been defeated and now we are in the process of uh manifesting that that victory that we have in Christ. Yeah. So. The way you just described it, every wrong will be made right and every sadness will, what did you say? Every sadness will, will become untrue. Will become untrue. That is not something to fear. Yes. That is something to look forward to. That's something to celebrate. That's something to say, hooray, that's yeah. in our future. So I'm not going to hide from that. I'm not going to fight that. I'm not going to, I, I can see a tendency to be like, I'm ready for that. Like, I yeah. want these to be the end times if that's what's coming. But, man, that is that is encouraging that that's what the end times look like. And if that's not true yet, then we're not in the end times. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, instead of fearing judgment, we should be looking forward to getting to court. Exactly. Because our side has already won. Yeah. The, the, the verdict's already been made on me and you, and the verdict's already been made on creation. Yeah. Uh, Jesus bought and paid. He redeemed creation. Yeah. So we should be looking forward to whatever judgment day is coming, because in the judgment day, we're vindicated in Christ, and everything else is, is what's destroyed. We, we and, and the verdict's not in question. We know what it is. Right. Right. So, so we don't have to fear the future. And we don't have to fear failure. So, that's good. That's really good. That's encouraging. I think we 
we probably need to have some more conversations just because we're now, once you see that, once you have that shift of like, okay, this is what it looks like, then we go, okay, I'm leaven, I'm salt, and I'm light. Yeah. That's where we live. Yeah. That's where we live. That's that's who I am right now. Yeah, that's how we relate to our world. That's how we relate to our world. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We relate to God. I'm a son. I'm forgiven. I'm cleansed. I'm justified. Uh, as we relate to each other, we're gifted. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm-hmm. We're mutually submissive to one another. So we relate to God. We relate to mm-hmm. our society. We relate to the body of Christ. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's encouraging. And it's not spooky. No, it is not. <laughs> It is no charts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks for joining us for uh, Papa. I have a question and join us next time for another question that I'll have for Papa. <laughs> <laughs>